How to Use Jenkins CLI. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.452.2. Now, in order to start using the Jenkins CLI, we first have to download the Jenkins CLI. So to get there, let's go to Manage Jenkins. We'll scroll down to the bottom and we will click on Jenkins CLI. Now within the Jenkins CLI page, we can either download the Jenkins CLI jar from this link or from this link that's within the example. So let's go ahead and click on that link. And now we've downloaded the Jenkins CLI jar to our local machine. Now in order to run this jar file, it's best to go ahead and use the same version of Java that's running the Java on your controller. So for example, if I'm using Java 21 to run my Java process on my controller, I'm gonna use Java 21 to run my CLI jar. So to get started, let's run this example that's showing on the Jenkins CLI page. So I'm gonna copy this command and let's go over into our shell. We can see here in the shell that I already have access to my Jenkins CLI jar in this directory. So I'll just paste this in and say java-jar, Jenkins CLI jar, dash s, which is the Jenkins URL of the controller. So if you look up in the controller, I'm cblocal.codes101.com slash Jenkins. That's my Jenkins URL. And then we're going to pass in help. So let's hit enter. Now what we'll see here at the top is you must authenticate to access this Jenkins controller. Now in my case, I do have authentication set up, so I'll need to set up credentials in order to access this controller. Now before I set up the credentials, Let's change one more thing. We'll up arrow and let's go ahead and remove the dash S. So now our command is just Java dash jar, Jenkins CLI jar, help. So if we hit enter now, let's go back up top. Neither the dash S nor the Jenkins URL environment variable is specified. So if we want to keep our command shorter, we can go ahead and specify Jenkins URL as an environment variable so we can use it anytime that we're running the command. So let's go ahead and do that. So for Jenkins URL, I'm going to type export Jenkins URL equals, and I'm going to go ahead and copy the value that I see right here on the Jenkins CLI page. We'll paste that in. Let's make sure it's actually set. So we'll say echo Jenkins URL. So now if we run our command one more time with no dash S, and if we scroll back up top, now that we ran it, we don't see the dash S or Jenkins URL error message. So at this point, we have set up our Jenkins URL environment variable, and it's being used within our Jenkins CLI. Now, next up, remember the CLI told us that we needed to have authentication set up. So in order to set that up, what we need to do is we'll go up into our user, click on configure, and under API token, we're gonna to add a new API token. So we'll click on add new token. I'm just gonna give it the name test token and click on generate. Now, since this controller is running on my private network, there is no internet access, I'm fine showing you this token. When you generate your token, the token should look something similar to this. So what you do is go ahead and copy this token and we're gonna use it with our CLI. Now, how are we going to use it? If we go back over to our console, what we'll see here is we can pass in authentication. We can use a dash auth with user colon secret. We can do that or we could pass in a file, but also we can use environment variables. So if we go into the documentation for the CLI, there are two environment variables that we can use. We can use Jenkins user ID and also Jenkins API token. So that's what we're gonna do in our case. So in my case, my user ID is admin. So I'm gonna say export Jenkins underscore user underscore ID equals admin. And I'm gonna say export Jenkins API token. I'm gonna to set it equal to the value of my token. I'll go ahead and make sure that both of these are set as I expect. And we can see here that both my user ID and API token environment variables are set up correctly. So now if we go ahead and run our command one more time, just with help, so I'm saying Java dash jar, my CLI jar, help. Now what we get is we get back a list of commands that are available to me if I have the proper permissions to run. So we see anything from as simple as build, which we'll do that in just a moment. And we'll also see something called who am I right at the bottom. Now, what is who am I? So if we change out help for who dash am dash I, that's gonna tell me who I am, so I'm authenticated as admin, and my authorization is authenticated. So let's go ahead and test out running our build. Now, how do I figure out what I need to pass in to the build command? Well, again, let's go back over into our Manage Jenkins, Jenkins CLI. Two different ways we could figure this out. Number one, we could come to this page, click on build, and it's gonna give us all of the information that we need in order to run a build. So in this case, to keep it simple, we'll just say build and then the job. I have a job named test-job. We'll run that in just a moment. 
But notice that we also have lots of other options. So if we were to go back over into our command here, and if I type build, then when we run this, this gives us the same information that we're seeing on this page. So in our case, our job is test-job. So I'll go ahead and go back over here. Let's go ahead and say build test-job. It came back. We can see that the job is already scheduled on the controller. So if we click into number seven, we can see that the job ran. It's already completed successfully. And the other thing is, we can see that it was started from the command line by admin. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.